Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn and to another spooky season video. Now whilst this video is part of my spooky season series, it's an idea that can be translated into any miniature scene and an item that any doll's house would not be complete without. Today we're going to be making doormats. I'm making spooky ones but you could make anything you wanted. And it'll just show you that how simple it is to personalise your project with something that can be totally unique. The main material that we're going to use today is felt. I've got some black because spooky. Got to be black, hasn't it really? But also I've got some that is a dark brown colour. It's not exactly the kind of brown that you get um, for doormats, at least not the ones you get over here. But the lighter colour I've got is actually more of a gold colour and um, I'm trying not to buy anything else. So I thought, well, we'll deal with this. You can use any colour you want. You can make your doormat in any colour, but this is the main material. I'm also going to be using some recycled food packaging. This is from an old cereal box and this is going to give us um, the, um, the rigidity. That's the word I was looking for, the rigidity that these mats will need so that they'll stay in place. So I'm going to start off with cutting this and the first mat that I'm going to do is actually a little bit different. I'm going to start with the most difficult one and work towards the easiest. I know it's a bit backwards but it's how I'm feeling it today. I want to make a sort of um, half circle mat. Now you could do this using anything as a um, template. I happen to have these plastic templates from back when I was doing paper crafting many moons ago and they're quite useful. I got rid of the tool that went with them many years ago but I kept these and they're mostly used for drawing ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to on this sort of scrappy piece of my um, recycled board I'm going to put this so I've got what I want and I'm just going to um, Mark it, just with a pencil, and then as you can see, I've got my part of a circle. Now I'm going to cut this out, um, I'm just going to cut it out with a pair of scissors, and obviously you need to be fairly accurate. Now, you can cut this out with a knife if you prefer. Some people do. You can use a bigger pair of scissors. You use what works for you. But there we go. I've got my, um, my part circle. Now, I actually went and I measured the door that I'm going to put this in front of. And the circle that I've used is a two inch diameter. Um, my door is approximately two and a half inches wide but I figure you don't normally have a mat that fills the entire space in front of your door so I figured that would work. Now next step involves some glue and I'm going to put some glue onto the back of this. This is onto the printed side because um, you can get rid of the printed size this way. It's far easier than trying to um, paint over it or anything else. And I'm just going to line that up on another piece with the edge, like so. And I'm going to let this dry. And what this is going to do is this is going to give me a double thickness, so it's going to be nice and um, sturdy. You could use thicker material if you've got thicker material but in keeping with my trying to use as many 
pieces that would be thrown away otherwise I've got something that should have gone in the recycling bin so we'll let that dry and then we'll come back to it I have um, already trimmed off the second piece of the um, food packaging so that I've now got a piece that is plain on both sides and um, is ready to work with. Now the next step, as I knock everything off my desk that is all neatly lined up next to me, is felt. Now I'm using the black for this. Um, this is actually a scrap from something else that I was doing. Um, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of my glue, not a lot. Um, this glue is actually quite good for not blobbing too much out every single time. And I'm going to put that somewhere down there near the corner. And um, I'm going to put something heavy on top. This little circle punch is quite heavy, just to hold it down while it dries. Now, you can use fabric glue, but I would recommend that you try your glue on your, on your felt before you actually work on your project. I know this works because I've used it before and it doesn't show through as long as I don't use large quantities. So again I'm going to leave this to dry and then we're going to trim the felt around so that we've got a half circle um, felt piece. I have the um, prepared mat. This is my prepared half circle, half moon, semicircular, whichever term you prefer, that's what it is. Obviously I've done it in black because spooky, but you could do it in brown for a more doormat um, type of colour. Now what I'm doing is I've got one of my Posca paint pens and I'm just colouring the edges of the card just because they're a bit um, stand out ish. Um, with the brown, I'll probably just go with black as well, and it might need me to go over it, touch up any bits that have been missed. But what it just means is that it's going to look much neater um, in your scene. Next stage is decoration. Now, you could just do something simple. Um, welcome. The regular welcome mat outside the house. This one I'm actually doing based upon one that I've seen online and it's got a slightly more um, involved design on it. So I'm going to go off screen now and with my um, marker pencil, it's actually an eyeliner pencil because I can't find my um, like Taylor's pencil thing. It's disappeared somewhere in the depths of the craft room. I know there's one round here somewhere. And I'm going to draw out what my design is going to be. And then that is going to be gone over with some acrylic paint. But I'm going to start off by drawing it out. Now, I drew this out with the pencil, but it wasn't going to show up very well on camera. So I've gone over it with a white Posca pen. And hopefully now you can see that I've got a set of fangs, not a very um, even set of fangs, but hey ho, they're hand drawn. And I've got here in my um, paint palette, I've got some um, titanium white acrylic paint. This is artist quality acrylic, which means it is um, thicker because you need it to be um, opaque to cover the black, obviously. Although if you've ever looked at one of these mats, the printing is never um, that good. Actually, I think some of the ones that are DIY are actually better than anything that you'd get if you bought it. And using the lines that I've drawn with the Posca pen as my guide, I'm going to fill this in. Now I'm filling it in with a small paintbrush because um, I want to get this right. So it's going to take a while. But I think you get the idea. I, am, I will come back once I've put one coat on and show you 
and then I'll tell you whether I'm going to put a second coat on or not. Looking at it already, I think I may need to add a second coat. Here we have it after the first coat and as you can see it is rather bitty. I'm going to give this a little while to dry and then I'm going to add a second coat. Um, I think it needs it um, just to make it look a bit whiter than it does at the moment. I think that this is about as opaque as I am going to manage to get the white paint um, but I think it's adequate um, for a doormat because the printing on them is quite often not um, perfect because of the material that they're made from. Now what I found was once the um, basic shape was um, established that I was better off with a dabbing motion just literally dabbing the paint on if this had been a bigger project um, I'd say use a sponge brush that would have been ideal but at this scale I had to use my little brush and um, just dab carefully I've also had added um, my little slogan my welcome now I know that the idea of a vampire that um, doesn't pronounce its W's is a bit cliched but hey ho and this actually makes a lot of sense because there will one day be a vampire living in a crypt under my, under my house it's not there yet the crypt isn't there yet but plans are afoot and one day it will happen the final little touch for this is to add some red now I'm using just a touch of um, red artist paint and I'll use that brush I think and I'm literally just going to put a little bit on the end of the brush and I'm going to put a bit of red onto the end of our fangs so that it looks like this is a vamp that's been feeding. I'll just pop the lid back on there and that is about that. I'll bring it up hopefully it's still in focus. Um, that is my Halloween doormat which is um, come out better than I expected because painting on felt is not easy. Um, Obviously, this is one of the instances where I recommend artist acrylics, as I've said a few times, because they're thicker. Craft paint, bit thinner, a bit runnier, probably wouldn't have um, covered as well. So I'm going to set that to dry and I'm going to get on with um, another one. For my next doormat, I've actually used my paper trimmer for cutting the food packaging. Um, I use this because it is the easiest way to get um, regular sized pieces. I've actually got two, I've got a bigger one, but this one was more than big enough for what I'm doing at the moment. Now I'll just move that out of the way and then I can show you what I've done. Now my normal doormat is two and a quarter inches by one and a quarter inches. I decided on that because it seemed like a reasonable size for a doormat. Now this is prepared with two layers. This one was a case of actually cutting two pieces of the same size and sticking them together. But I figured I get this bit done because you know I showed you on the first one. Now I'm going to glue this again to the felt and I've got my felt here, I've got my glue and it is just a case of applying a small amount of glue all over the cardstock and this glue isn't, my, the glue I use isn't particularly wet so it does make life a little bit easier and I'm just going to put that on sort of um, near to the edges, I will trim it off in a while and again I'm going to weigh it down as I did before because it does help just until you get that bond established. So that is the basic doormat um, process. Once this is stuck, 
which we've got to be careful because this will not have dried yet. I'm going to get my fabric scissors and cut it off from there. Let me move that out of the way. Now, it is just a case of trimming the edges back to the card. And at this point, you have something that is passable as a um, doormat. Again, as I did with the semicircular one, this is the point at which you can decide where you want to take it. You could just put a, um, a simple line around the outside and write welcome on it. Um, or you can go down the spooky route, as I've done with my other pieces. So, I'm going to give this a little drying time and then we'll decorate it. With the glue dry, I have um, just coloured around the edges of the um, board with my Posca pen. Now, you could match this to the brown that you've used. I've decided that I go with the black because you do get um, that sort of rubberized backing on some of these mats so it would probably make sense for it to be black underneath i may in fact go back and paint the bottoms black afterwards um, but they're going to be left in place so you know if you wanted them for a shop to be on display then by all means color the back as well um, now i have actually prepared a couple of examples of this type that are um, spooky. I've done my home sweet haunted home which has got what are supposed to be spiders webs in the corners. Um, not my best work I will admit but um, that looks acceptable I think. That will probably be my everyday doormat. And then I had a go at a black one at doing a load of eyes. When I searched for spooky doormats on the internet which I advise you doing if you're going to do this because you can get an idea for different um, idea, for different design um, concepts. I found them they were covered in eyes, so I've done some eyes, but um, it wasn't very easy doing the white bits, so I just did white blobs and then went back with black paint and um, added that in. So I think I'm actually going to do this one as a non-spooky. So I've got my little ruler um, because I want to do a straight line and I'm just going to position it something like, I'm going to do this by eye and I'm going to draw my pen across the um, piece. Now, I should actually go a little bit further, we'll go a little bit further. Hmm. If I put this on the end like this, I can go down this side. I'm not being all too accurate. You can, of course, be more accurate and measure where you put your lines, but I'm eyeballing it because, well, why not? And then I'll just do the same at this side. And now I've got a basic mat with a line around the outside. Um, inside of that line, anything you want. We can put words images. Now I'm going to do this freehand. I'm going to do it on camera so please do excuse me. Now I actually have a smaller Posca pen but the black one did not want to work on the felt. 
this thicker one is being nice and juicy today incredibly juicy in fact it um, leaked all over me and the desk earlier so I figured we'd use up some of that um, sort of excess paint and put it on there and then it is simple as that I know I have a very simple um, quite straightforward welcome mat the black as black ink or, or paint even um, always seems to do as covered really really well and um, yeah I think that's um, come out really rather nice and here we have my finished doormats um, I'm quite happy with my teeth I think it works it probably actually looks a bit better in real life than it does on camera as a lot of these things do and I'm sure that my home sweet haunted home um, also looks better in real life than it does on camera I'm not looking at the camera that much at the moment so I can't be sure but I did want to show you that this is something that can per easily personalise a project, a house, um, any kind of a scene um, and it's really really simple. Um, you can put anything on there, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want but um, give it a go. If you've enjoyed this video please like, comment and subscribe. I've got more spooky season content coming soon and um, hopefully you'll stick around um, to find out what other ideas I've got up my sleeves this year. But until next time, bye!